Hi. Now it is time to do the suspension parts. I have my suspension meshes here. I will open my bike blueprint. There is a function we need to add to our blueprint. To do that, we need to make sure that the function is run both in the editor and the render. Go to the event graph and find the event tick function. This is the function that will run on each frame during rendering. But we also need to update the bike in the editor, because this blueprint doesn't need simulating, remember? Find this editor tick function and double click on it to add it to the event graph. Since this blueprint is a child of a parent blueprint, I need to make sure that the similar function from the parent is running too. Just the way this event tick is connected to the parent tick. I will right click on this function and click on add call to parent function. And connect the two. If I don't do that, the parent function will be ignored. To add my suspension function, I will right click and search for CBR. That cinematic bike rig and select this CBR Suspension Advanced. This function works like a look at constraint. I will connect both the event tick and editor tick to it. So when I'm in the editor, this will run, and when I simulate or render, this will run, so we need both of them connected. The first pin is the suspension mesh. This is the mesh that's being driven by the function. Any connector part or spring can be added as a suspension mesh. To add my meshes to the blueprint, I will add them to the components list. First, create an empty actor, name it suspension parts, and make it a child of the chassis just to be organized. Then, drag your meshes from the content browser and drop on this suspension actor. I will start with the front one. Just connect the front suspension part to the pin. The next pin is the parent mesh. This is the mesh that your part will attach to it with its pivot. If you remember, we placed the pivot of this part where it should be connected to the wheel. So, the parent mesh will be our front wheel. If you want your mesh to attach to the parent mesh anywhere other than the pivot of the parent, you can specify a socket name for it. But since we want the part to attach to the center of the wheel and the pivot of the wheel is in its center, we can leave the socket name empty. Next, we have to specify which mesh the part should look at on its x-axis. Let me quickly assemble the part so you can understand better. As you can see, the part should attach to the wheel on its pivot and look at the steering handle on its x-axis. So, the x-look at mesh should be the steering handle. If I leave this socket name empty, it will look at the pivot of it, but we set its pivot where it should connect to the body, not on the center of its axis. And now we want our part to look at the axis. So, we need to add a socket to the steering handle. I will open the steering handle mesh, go to the socket manager, and add a socket. Let's name this socket, front X, and move it to the steering handle axis. Now, go to the blueprint and write, front X, for the socket name. So now the part knows it should attach to the front wheel on the pivot and look at a socket on the steering handle in its x-axis. If you remember, we aligned this part in a way that this symmetric side faces the y-axis. We want this part to look at the steering handle, but this time on its y-axis. Let me show you what happens if we don't define a y lookat for the part. Compile and save this one. OK, we got lucky and the part is aligned perfectly but what if I add some steering angle? The part will go out of the axis because to lock the rotation, we need to define two look at directions. Let's open the steering handle mesh again, duplicate this socket by Ctrl D, and rename this one front Y. And move it somewhere like here. Just make sure these sockets are in the center, in other words, the location of Y should be zero. So I will connect the steering handle to the Y lookat mesh. 
and this time, the socket should be front Y. There is a scale option that can scale the part along the x-axis, so it fills the gap between the parent mesh and the x-lookout mesh. This option is specifically for springs or any elastic part. In my case, our part is solid, so I will turn this off. And this time, it is oriented correctly and locked. If I change the steering, it will rotate with it. See how that delays? That's because when I change the parameter, the construction script runs, but we did not add our function to the construction script. To fix that, I will copy what I've done, paste it into the construction script, and connect my node to it. The last pins are the scale. You can scale the part in the Y and Z axis if you want. And you can also mirror them by setting these scales minus 1. And lastly, there is the bike scale. When nothing is connected to it, if I scale my bike using the bike scale parameter, the part will not scale with it. To fix that, we need to right-click and search for bike scale, get it, and connect it to this pin. And when I change the bike scale. Oh, I forgot to do that too in the event graph. Now it's fixed. That's all there is to it. You just need to figure out where the part should attach and where it should look in its X and Y directions. Let's do the same for the rear suspension. Copy this. This time our suspension part is the rear suspension. The parent mesh should be the rear wheel and leave the socket empty. Our look at mesh should be the body. Open the body mesh, add the X socket, and name it Rear X. And place it somewhere like this. We can change the location of these sockets later. And let's add the Rear Y too. Save and write the socket names for the X and Y look at sockets. The scale should be off for this too. And let's connect the bike scale to this pin. Then copy everything and paste it into the construction script. So, the rear swing arm is sitting on the rear wheel, pivot to pivot, and looks at this socket on the body on X axis and the other socket on its Y axis. If I move the Y socket like this, you see it just changes the direction but does not affect the overall orientation. That's because our X lookat is the dominant constraint and the Y lookat is just for locking the rotation and preventing the part from any undesired rotation. Let's enjoy our work with moving this cube. And let's test it with this vibrating platform too. See you guys in the next one.